Speaking with Matt Hartman this morning, President of US Operations for GTI Energy. Matt, good to meet you. Good morning. Hey, good to meet you as well, Andrew. Happy to be here with you. An announcement here from you on the Low Herma ISR Uranium Project. Uh, the drill program, of course, fully funded. Just firstly, Matt, tell us a bit more about where Low Herma is located and and what's interesting about its location? Um, it's in the Powder River Basin of Wyoming, uh, probably one of the most prolific uranium producing basins in the United States. Uh, we have some great neighbors in that basin, uh, Cameco, Energy Fuels, um, uh, UEC, um, as well as several other companies that are, that are working on projects of both development and exploration phase. Uh, so really excited to be in there, um, know that we have great neighbors, know that we have good geology to start with, and um, um, really excited about the uh, the way the project fits within the portfolio and what we can do with it going forward. Well, just on that, Matt, give us a bit more detail about the geological setting for Low Herma. Yeah, so so Powder River Basin, basically we're looking at mineralization in the Wasatch Formation and also in the Fort Union Formation. Uh, those are the, the, the prolific producers in the basin. Um, if you look at Cameco Smith Ranch Highland, which is about 14 kilometers to the east of La Herma, they've produced about 23 million pounds uh, via, via ISR mining methods out of those same formations. Um, so, so we know we've got, um, you know, if, if we're anything close to that, we'll, we'll be pretty happy, I think. And what's the, the current resource estimate for the project? Yeah, the current resource estimate is just over 5.7 million pounds of inferred uranium, U308. Um, we also have an exploration target on that that has a, a pretty big range to it. I think it shows somewhere in the in the neighborhood of, say, five and a half to 10 million pounds of additional potential out there. Um, and that's kind of what we're hoping to tap into as we go forward. So how big does this project need to be for it to be economic? So I think that's always a, a, a question everybody has is how 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 do these really fit together? What are the economics like on an ISR project? Now, obviously, they have a much lower capital cost than what you see from, say, traditional hard rock mining. Um, but, you know, end of the day, it's it's so it's a well filled and a water treatment facility. So the capex is low. Um, and that means we don't have to have, you know, an Athabasca style deposit with 60, 70, 100 plus million pounds of uranium. Um, what we've seen, what's been demonstrated in industry in the past, especially in Wyoming and those formations and those development costs, is that once you hit a threshold of around 8 million pounds, um, you get really, really nice economic returns on these projects. So that's kind of what, what we're aiming to get to, um, maybe hopefully this year. Um, but obviously, I think we've got uh, numbers in the book right now that show the potential of the project to, to get above that threshold and, and be something that we can push forward in, into a development phase in the near future. Right, Matt. So as far as the drill program, uh, how many holes, how many meters, and I suppose how deep are you looking to drill? Yeah, so right now we've got, uh, I think our permit's going to cover about 76 new drill holes out there. Um, we'll have the option to convert five of those to groundwater monitoring wells um, to, to, to look at that information data set as well. Um, what we're hoping to do as far as depth wise is that in the past, you know, if you look at historical drilling through the 1970s by, by previous owners of this project, the, the majority of the drilling kind of averaged around 400 feet from surface. Um, our average for this program is going to be about 750 feet, so a little bit deeper. Um, we'd like to further test some of the uh, uh, kind of the upper to, to mid uh, Fort Union formation sand units. Um, they've shown some, some mineralization in the past where they've you know, been hit here or there with some random drill holes. Uh, we're coming in, doing a little bit more systematic look at that. Hopefully be able to tie some stuff together, tie some deeper mineralization together, obviously deeper, you know, still if we're, you know, six, 700 feet, that's really good for ISR, uh, plenty of submergence within groundwater usually. Um, so we're, we're looking both both laterally um, with our with our drill holes to look for further extent of mineralization along trend lines and with depth. So we're kind of got, you know, two options there as far, we as, far as how we grow that resource. So extension of of mineralization, growing the resource, I suppose, Matt, just what what is the the overall ambition from this drill program? I think I think I think the real ambition is to is to continue to show that we can grow this every time we drill. Um, I think that's one of the greatest things you can do with the, with an exploration project is not just drill and and end up you know with small increases. We want to do material increases of that resource. You know, we drilled last uh, November. We did not do a, a revised mineral resource after that. We've also acquired some additional ground. Now we're gonna go drill some more. So we've had some, some different activities that we're really putting this project together um, and exploring on it. And I think we'll be able to do a new mineral resource estimate on the backside of this, of this drill program. And hopefully that'll kind of push us towards that threshold of that 8 million pounds or something like that. 
wait and see where we end up. But that's kind of our objective and where we want to get to go. And hopefully we'll be much higher than that number um, as we move forward over the years with this project. Well, I suppose, Matt, just to summarize and to build on what you're saying, tell us a bit more as to what success here would look like and upcoming milestones for for the remainder of 2024 and into 2025. Yeah, so I think I think you know we, we've got this really nice set path for us um, as we go forward through probably the next six to twelve months. Um, as I noted on the backside of this drill program, we will do a new mineral resource estimate for the project. I think it will show a nice increase both in mineral resource size, um, and then we're also going to take some of that inferred and hopefully be able to to move that up to indicated. So a little bit of reclassification of the resources, and then on the backside of that, assuming we have a favorable outcome for our drill program we'd like to push that into a scoping study. Um, and so, and so, you know, we have that mineral resource estimate. If you, if you see a number that comes out looking like what I've been saying today, as far as what our potential is, we'll, we'll probably have an announcement that we'll move into a scoping study. Uh, from the time we announced that scoping study, probably, you know, give or take six months to get that completed. And then we'll be able to demonstrate to the market just what the economic potential of the Low Hermit project is. And, 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 you know, that's just the, the base, you know, we can grow that even further beyond that, hopefully. Great to see you, Matt. Thanks for your time. Hey, thanks, Andrew. Really appreciate it.